okay uh screen share has been enabled okay so yeah if anyone are new actually today uh let me introduce myself actually uh today's class is a continuation of yesterday's class but yeah uh before moving further let let me introduce okay just short introduction and what we have discussed yesterday i am shiva so i have uh, overall eight plus years of experience i worked with multiple technologies okay so i started with developer and uh, moved to devops <clears throat> sorry i hold multiple certifications uh, developer associate aws developer associate uh, like administrator cka actually certified kubernetes administrator and the uh, terraform associate certifications okay so what we have discussed yesterday is all about like uh, introduction parts like introduction to uh, syllabus actually and what are the prerequisites that are required to join this course the only prerequisite that is required to join this course is the aws account and the 4 gb 4 gb of ram laptop and the course content we have seen yesterday what are the different things that are there in this content and what we are going to do all these things i have explained yesterday but yeah if 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 that is not understood that will be very clear in the uh, in, in in the sessions actually right so after that what we we went to uh, uh the the projects what we are going to do i have explained you <clears throat> seven different projects that have been uh, uh, covered actually that you, uh, that will be definitely 10 and more than 10 actually okay uh, it it we are going to do more than 10 projects it will be between the number will be between 10 and 15 okay please remember that okay now, the number of projects that we are going to do in this course between it will be between 10 and uh, 15 actually uh argo cd we are going to work cic we are going to work istio we are going to work helm we are going to work but not kialia and yega uh, 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 okay so yeah it's not istio also helm argo cd and ci cd i have put this sto and kiali as an optional project uh, uh, as part of the yesterday's session you can see that the session was uploaded to uh, uh, what is that uh, Durgasov channel in the YouTube you can go through that actually that's the optional project that I have, that I have put okay let me share that share the screen and uh, <clears throat> sorry uh, let me share it and you can see that uh, this is a project I have put as optional uh, where is that the Kiali one Okay, this is STO and Kiali. It's a service mesh. This one is the optional project based on the time, based on the uh, uh, the, the time availability and the people availability. We will be discussing this project. Okay, uh, mostly we'll be discussing, but yeah, I, I put as optional. Okay, so if this is being considered entirely eight different projects, eight different projects from Docker, Kubernetes, Jenkins. Okay, so if this is not considered from Docker, Kubernetes, Jenkins, we are going to do seven different projects. Okay, so yeah, and uh, from the AWS, we are going to get few more projects actually. So that's the thing actually. Okay, we have discussed all these things yesterday. Now again, what we have discussed is how I am going to support you when you are getting any issues while you practice. Okay, so that's what we have discussed. Okay, I am going to support you from the Slack channel once you have registered for the course you will be added to this slack channel so that when you practice okay when you practice if you face any issues you can put your messages or the comments in that in the in this slack channel by pasting the image or whatever it is the error uh, and whatever it is you want you can put it here so that uh, we will be there to to solve your problem okay but technical problems will be solved by me non-technical problems like access permissions and uh, if any issues in in joining the in the joining the sessions all those non-technical things you need to contact durga soft okay so that's what we have discussed in the yesterday's class okay so yeah now that's the thing if you have any questions anyone please ask if not we will be moving towards the course today actually let's move that any questions please anyone Anyone have any questions? If you if if you don't want to ask, please put it in chat. Okay, no problem. Mm 
yes. KAS security will be covered, role-based access control, service accounts, and the network policies, all these things security will be covered as part of the uh, Kubernetes. Yes, Gen AI services will be part of the AWS. Okay, Gen AI, generative AI services will be part of the AWS. If you see the course content, you can see that, okay, uh, if you go down to the bottom, okay, Amazon Bedrock, Amazon Q, all these are the Gen AI services we are going to uh, cover in this course. Okay, so very clearly, like uh, these are the Gen AI services. Yes, they are there actually. Okay. Is that okay, Chandra Shekhar? Yes, sir. Sir, this, uh, thank you, sir. Actually, I was uh, interested in bedrock, so thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good uh, choice, yes. Uh, sir, I didn't uh, listen yesterday's video. This this time is confirmed, right, sir? So this yes. is the confirmed time, right? Yes, 8 to 9.15 is the confirmed time. Okay, thank you, sir. Your time is not going to be changed, okay? So communication between microservices deployed in different Kubernetes clusters using service mesh no we are not going to deploy in the different kubernetes clusters okay so uh, we are going to deploy the applications in a single kubernetes cluster okay let's think about this scenario no problem okay we can also establish a communication between the uh, uh, different uh, applications deployed in the different kubernetes clusters no problem uh, by whatever it is uh, by by establishing the link like uh, vpc pairing between the first Kubernetes cluster and the second Kubernetes cluster, not only service mesh, there are many other options uh, we, with which we can establish the communication between the things. But yeah, uh, service mesh project I have put as optional. Let's see the possibilities and based on that, we'll be going to that. Okay, so that's a, a thing. Yeah. <clears throat> Currently in our project, what happened, right? Like uh, we are calling an uh, API mm -hmm. uh, through uh, CDN, the Akamai and then load balancer and all that stuff. But okay. because this this is a Kubernetes microservices, other one is also Kubernetes services. Mm -hmm. uh, but they could have been calling directly, right? Like instead of that, they're calling through uh, the public API gateway. That, yeah. That's uh, creating a latency. So we were trying to solve that in our company. So I thought like if you can help us with uh, giving some insight, how to, if, if all, both of them are hosted in the uh, same, uh, Amazon account, but uh, when they are calling in a server side rendering that API, they are calling through the front end. I mean, through a long path. Yes, uh, through the domain name you can. Yeah, you can... yeah, domain name and all that. Okay. That, that is so yeah, that's, that's a long it. path that is going to happen. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you can also call with the help of uh, VPC peering. Actually, uh, we, you can establish a link between two two different VPCs for your Kubernetes clusters, and you can also do that. Okay, no problem with that. Let's see the possibilities that that also we have also implemented in our company. Uh, this one. Okay, let's see the possibilities. But but the 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 the, the database uh in is in the is in the second VPC and the uh the applications uh is in is in the Kubernetes cluster in is in the different VPC. Okay, we have established the communication between the database and the uh applications which are in the different VPCs. Uh, okay, so yeah, that's that's we have did that. Uh, let's see let's see the possibilities. No problem. Uh, it's a uh uh doable scenario no problem with that okay okay the sidecars and uh, logging and all that will that be called yes. logging is there metric is there sidecar will be coming under STO. that is that is uh, that is there as part of the optional project okay based on the I, i've already told you based on the student availability and all these things i'll be mentioning uh, that to you in the previous batches I've mentioned, but yeah, that also based on the student availability because uh, some people might not be interested in that project, okay, because that's a complex one, okay. So yeah, logging and metrics is definitely there. Uh, you can see that in the diagrams. Uh, we are going to discuss the EFK stack uh, with respect to logging. Uh, where is that? Yeah, this is the one. And uh, the metrics related to this is this one where we are going to perform the instrumentation for our uh, microservice uh, where where we are go going to add some dependencies to the uh, to the to the to our microservice and we are going to convert the metrics in the Prometheus understandable format by adding the dependencies we are going to add the 
uh, actuator as well as a micrometer. So see, all these things are there, but uh, yeah, that's the thing. If I tell all this now, it might be confusing for you people. Uh, whoever understands the Spring Boot, it might be easy, but yeah, whoever does not understand the Spring Boot, it might be confusing. Before going to the project, I will be a small introduction will be given with the Spring Boot applications. Like what is Spring Boot application? What are APIs? What is a dependency? So all these things, a small, small introduction so that it will be very clear for you uh, uh, how the applications works actually. So yeah, that's the type of project we are going to do. But yeah, this uh, uh, Envoy proxy, like uh, sidecar containers will be deployed as Envoy proxy. Uh, Envoy proxy will be deployed as a sidecar containers in the pod actually. This is an optional project, but the logging and the metric collection is there actually. The duration, sir? Duration is between 60 and 70 days. Saturday and Sunday also class will be there or only Monday to Friday? No, no, no Saturdays and Sundays. Mostly 90% of the time, Saturdays and Sundays classes won't be there. I need to keep that 10% as a buffer period for me. If anything is left in the middle in the previous class, I need to complete in the Saturday and Sunday class. Okay. So yeah, that's the thing. No, Terraform is not going to be discussed on car and uh, at what level AWS services will be discussed. It it, it will be discussed at the, at the level of solution architect. Okay, so you can attend the practitioner exam and the solution architect exam and you can also attend AI practitioner. Okay, because these services will be there as part of the AI practitioner. They are, all going, they, they are going to ask these services in the AI practitioner. Also, okay, these three certifications you are eligible for, okay, after doing this. AWS. Okay. Okay. Let's move further. Let's move further. See, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, as you already know, this course is entirely about AWS Jenkins, Docker, and Kubernetes. Okay. So let's move further with that. Uh, yesterday we have did this tutor introduction and general introduction, the course introduction, uh, what we have did this. And today this is our agenda. This is going to be our agenda. Okay. So what is DevOps? What is an application actually? What is SDLC? Uh, uh, like what is a server? What is a physical server? What is Docker and Kubernetes? Where does Docker and Kubernetes fits in release process? Please bear with me because this for, for some people, this might be very basic, but yeah, I need to start from basic. Uh, I need to keep in mind everyone in the class and I need to explain, right? So that's the thing. Okay, DevOps. DevOps is a combination of development and operations, okay? It does not mean an application development in DevOps, actually. It does not mean an application development. It means that, okay, uh, developing the script in order to automate, in order to automate the regular things. Okay, regular things means uh, manual activities daily you need to perform. Okay, uh, daily stopping the instance, starting the instance, stopping the instance morning, uh, st starting the instance morning, stopping the instance evening, and the second day, third day also doing like that. So it is the manual activity daily you need to perform. So for that activity, you need to write some script, you need to develop some script to perform that activity as an automation. Okay, so that comes under development. Okay, it does not mean the application development. Okay, it means that developing some scripts, developing some programs, whether it is a Python or it's a Groovy, whatever the programming language you take. Okay, so developing some script in order to perform some automation. Okay, that comes under development, but few companies expect uh, DevOps engineers to know the development functionalities, but not actual code, out, uh, how to write the code, but yeah. They need to understand few things as part of the development uh, related to microservices. Who deals with microservices actually? That comes under development. And the operations, what are operations? Maintenance comes under operations actually. Continuously releasing software updates to your environments. Like you will be having different environments in your company like uh, test UAT, demo, prod, pre-prod, right? So you need to release the softwares, updated updated code, updated code by the developers. You need to release to these environments regularly when they are going to 
tell you this need to be updated to production okay you need to release that okay that comes under operation you need to maintain the applications you need to maintain the infrastructure infrastructure means see in order to deploy an application you need servers okay you need different different components you need load balancers you need different security groups all this comes under infrastructure okay this infrastructure you need to maintain okay you need to regularly update the infrastructure you need to regularly update the operating systems on the infrastructure okay whenever they got released okay so you need to check uh, whether any security breaches are there within the infrastructure so all these things maintenance comes under operations actually okay so a devops is a methodology actually okay which is a combination of multiple tools okay so uh it it it, it, it is a combination of multiple tools and in this in this course we are uh learning few tools actually uh aws docker uh, jenkins and kubernetes so these are the four four tools that we are going to cover as part of this course okay so that will be in very detail okay so that's 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 why we have put four the four only four tools but the duration is long that is the reason uh we, we are going to cover that tools in the depth okay so that's the thing actually now what is an application yeah application is simply nothing but a website okay whatever it is we regularly use your applications or applications right we are going to uh, open the instagram that is an application okay so we are going to open the youtube that is an application red bus application okay so that is an application actually where where it is going to satisfy our requirements and all the things actually that's an application okay so see in order to develop this application okay people in the industry will be using some some development life cycle okay uh, sdlc software development life cycle yeah of course there are different methodologies uh, uh, nowadays all the people are using agile right but not uh, sdlc but yeah in the previous days i'm talking about but yeah uh, okay so in this software development life cycle there are six different phases okay so uh analysis phase let me quickly go through this different phases analysis phase or the requirements phase okay the team will be connecting collecting the requirements what are required in order to do this complete complete this project okay uh, how many how, how how many employees are required what are the things that is required okay all these things will be analyzed as part of this analysis phase or the requirements phase and the design phase in the next phase uh, it's a design phase where our uh, end product will be designed actually uh, how to how it should look like uh, suppose you have a front screen or in order to perform login you need to enter your username and you need to enter your password right so uh, where that you login uh, login details should be put on the page actually whether it's it, it is on the top or the bottom or the left or the right so uh, that kind of design will be happened in this design phase uh, by the ui ux designer or uh, and uh, there will be a system design uh, that also will be happening as part of the design phase okay so yeah they are going to follow multiple design patterns uh, uh i know uh, i hope the who, who who are working with the backend will be able to know there are multiple design pattern builder design pattern all these things over there actually so in the design phase a design will be created for our application okay based on the design okay the developers will be developing the application actually developers will be developing the application that is comes under development phase okay in the development phase developers are also going to write unit test cases okay the it's all related to development you no need of worrying about that okay people are going to use developers are going to use some of the frameworks j unit mock it on power mock okay so using that frame frameworks for their application which they have developed they are going to write test cases okay okay they are they are going to perform unit testing okay in the development phase itself okay so once the development got completed your software which you have developed in this development phase will be going to the testing phase okay it will be tested by the testers okay so the testing team will be there they are going to use different tools selenium or whatever it is cucumber or whatever it is they are going to perform regression testing stress testing or performance testing all these things they are going to perform on this thing in the testing phase 
okay they are going to check the real reliability of your application uh, and the availability of your application but for by sending the different inputs to your application actually so all these things will be performed as part of the testing phase then the deployment phase once the testing got completed once the testing got completed here is where our docker and kubernetes comes into picture okay so deployment deployment phase we are see after the testing is completed that should be that application should be available to users right so you cannot put your application with you right so that will be available to users in order to make that availability you need to put this application on something on server okay so that your application will be will be available to all users actually so so you need to deploy your application which is uh, developed and tested and that will be performed in the deployment phase okay nowadays uh, the deploy in the deployment phase various tools are there like docker and kubernetes people are go are following docker and kubernetes way of deploying their microservices to the kubernetes or the whatever it is wherever they want on the servers let me say okay on the servers okay so deployment deploying means placing your applications placing your de developed applications on server that is the meaning of deployment who whoever don't know okay that's a deployment actually now maintenance after the deployment okay maintenance means like maintaining i already told you it comes to, comes under operations regularly releasing the updates and all these things and uh, uh, like all these things you need to monitor the application whether it's running or not and the maintaining the servers and all the things so that comes under the maintenance phase okay the main thing for us where our docker and kubernetes fits is the deployment phase actually where our docker and kubernetes phase okay in this software development life cycle our docker and kubernetes fits in the deployment phase i'm going to talk about the microservices i'm going to talk about the monolithic but do not worry about that if you if, if, if you people don't know but yeah let's let's move further with that this is software development life cycle why i've put it here because you need to understand where our docker and kubernetes fits in the software development life cycle so so that's why i have put uh this this diagram in this slides actually so that's the thing now what is the server what is the server what is the server so you need something okay you have an application okay your application should be available to everyone in the world okay so uh, that is your requirement like it's your application is like a uh, ott platform okay so that should be available to everyone in the world everyone able everyone in the world should be able to access your application right so you need something okay to put to uh, to, to to make your application accessible to everyone in the world okay that is the server actually you are going to put your application on the server which will make your application available to everyone in the world based on your requirements okay so that is the server there are many types of servers actually uh, there are few types of servers not many okay there are uh, physical servers virtual servers and uh, uh, yeah the two types of servers are the physical server virtual servers what are physical servers okay where does docker and kubernetes fits in SGLC process it's in deployment phase okay now deploying applications on physical servers what are physical servers actually okay the servers which we can touch or which we can feel okay which your laptop is a physical server okay your laptop is a physical server on which you are you are you are installing various softwares you can touch your laptop and you can feel your laptop this is something called physical server okay so there are if if you deploy your application on the physical server there are many disadvantages are there if you deploy your application on the physical servers now let's move with that disadvantages that you have because why the physical what are the different problems that are faced if you deploy your applications on the physical servers because of this problem virtualization is evolved and what are the problems that are there in virtualization because of those problems in the virtualization how the docker is evolved so that's what we are going to learn that's that's our agenda okay now let me move to the diagram okay let me go here okay now uh if anyone have any questions in the middle please you can stop me okay so that's the thing now let's discuss about the physical servers okay let me increase the font okay uh, 
ओके फिजिकल सर्वर ओके सपोज दिस इज द फिजिकल सर्वर दैट वी हैव ओके दिस इज द फिजिकल सर्वर दैट वी हैव दिस फिजिकल सर्वर इज नथिंग बट ए लाइक ए लैपटॉप फॉर अस okay so this is hosted in the data center or whoever maintaining that physical server like it's a like a server where you can put your application so that the applications will be available to everyone in the world that's a thing actually right this physical server let's think this physical server has 10 gb of ram okay 10 gb of ram and 10 cpus 10 cpus okay this is the physical server which has 10 gb of ram and 10 cpus in order to run our application okay in order to run our application suppose i want to deploy an application actually suppose th this application that we have okay this is i want to deploy this application to this physical server okay so let me label this as app 1 okay app 1 okay now okay now this applications which we deployed this application which i have deployed onto this physical server require only 1 gb of ram 1 gb of ram okay to run that application okay it requires only 1 gb of ram and 1 cpu 1 cpu it require only 1 gb of ram and 1 cpu to run on this physical server and how much amount of cpu how much amount of gb is there for our physical server there are 10 gb and the 10 cpus are there allocated to our physical server now what is the left out cpu and what is the left out gb okay the 9 gb and the 9 cpus are left out okay 9 gb and Nine CPUs, CPU are left out. Okay, one GB and one CPU is allocated to our application. What, what about nine GB and nine CPUs that are there for this actually? Okay, for out of this. Okay, now the first disadvantage is this: if you deploy your applications on the physical server, the first disadvantage. Now let me write it here: disadvantages of using physical server in order to deploy our applications. Okay, this. Uh, to deploy applications. Okay, the first disadvantage. Okay, the first disadvantage is the resource wastage. You can see that here, out of ten GB of ram and 10 cpus 1 gb of ram and 1 cpu is used by my application and the 9 gb of ram and 9 cpus were were wasted right so the that is a resources these are something called memory and cpu are something called resources okay the main disadvantage that you have when you de when you deploy your applications on the physical server is resource resource wastage wastage okay uh, so this is a first uh, disadvantage okay out of out of many disadvantages we have we let's discuss few of them okay because there are many actually now okay so uh, if i want to deploy multiple applications suppose i have two different applications i need to deploy okay suppose uh, this is another application okay app 2 okay app 2 app 2 and i have another application this is another application this is going to be app 3 okay so this is another application app 3 so if you want to deploy multiple applications you need multiple physical servers okay so this physical servers you need to purchase from the market okay okay so if you, if you want to deploy multiple applications even though the resources are there resources means memory and cpu are there in the first physical server okay you need to in order to deploy other two applications you need to purchase other two physical servers uh, other two physical servers from the market actually so that makes the 
like huge cost you need to purchase right so you need to that that that, that make your money you need to spend huge cost actually now that uh, this, uh, this is happening because i have already deployed one application on this physical server so i cannot uh, deploy uh, app 2 and app 3 so yes. i need to buy uh, new servers right? yes because there is no virtualization as part of this physical server okay 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 yeah yeah right. thank you yeah so this is the second disadvantage that we have uh, that is a huge cost you need to you need to purchase uh, uh, new new servers right so in order to deploy app 2 and app 3 there's a huge cost okay suppose you have a money and you have purchased no problem you 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 have a money and you have purchased okay so then then what will be the case if you purchase multiple physical servers you need to have a big room you know to maintain that you need to have a separate team in order to in order to uh, monitor that always you need to provide the air conditioners and you need to because because uh, because regularly it there should be in the cool place and you need to provide the electricity okay right so all this are nonsense actually so the, the, there will be huge maintenance okay if you have multiple physical servers okay now let me write that also a, as a disadvantage okay because yeah that's a maintenance also have major effect okay maintenance maintenance uh, is the other disadvantage that we have okay maintenance is the other disadvantage that we have when we deal with physical when we deploy our applications on the physical servers okay what are the other disadvantage suppose there is a, some problem there is some problem with the physical server okay now because of problem because of some problem our physical server entirely crashed entirely down okay there will not be high availability okay there is no new physical server you need to deploy you need to purchase another physical server and deploy this application okay so there is no high availability that are there as part of this physical server if you deploy your application as part of this physical server this this if this physical server is crashed the application on that physical server may not be accessible it will not be accessible actually the users who are accessing that application will be affected okay so that is no high availability there is no high availability when we deal with physical servers no high uh, high availability okay so that's a fourth disadvantage there are many disadvantages like this okay let's stick to this because if you go on talking it will be coming go on coming actually but yeah let's stick to this and based on these disadvantages there is a concept called virtualization okay virtualization okay or the virtual servers or the virtual servers let let let's let's talk about that okay now uh, let me what i can do is uh, let me put okay okay that's okay now what is virtualization okay virtualization means create out of one physical server creating multiple virtual servers what are virtual servers we are going to see okay just just a diagram just just uh, look at the diagram okay so this is the physical server let, let me label that so that uh, physical physical server okay this is physical server this is also a physical server this is also a physical server okay let me label that physical server which contains 10 cpus and 10 GB of memory or the RAM, okay, that we call it as, okay, on this physical server, okay, just, just keep in mind, okay, because these are very important, these are basics when we deal with Docker, okay, so on this physical server, there is going to be an operating system, okay, this is something called host operating system, okay, this, this is something called host operating system, okay, so there is going to be an operating system, okay, whatever the operating system, it might be the Linux, it might be the Ubuntu, okay, it might be the different flavor of the Linux, or, or, or it might be the Windows, okay, or, or, or it might be the Mac, okay, so this is the operating system that we are going to have, OPE operating, okay, system that we are going to have, okay 
on this operating system instead of deploying our applications directly we are going to install we uh, people have installed not we okay people have installed people in the industry have installed something called virtualization software okay there is there are multiple virtualization software are available in the market okay so people have installed something called virtualization software on top of this on top of this physical server let, let me write that one okay so you might have also uh come this scenario okay where okay or virtualization where virtualization software so you might be come with the scenario previously you might have installed virtual box on your laptop your laptop might be the windows laptop on which you have installed virtual box you might have installed virtual box what that virtual box will make it, it it will make to create multiple machines inside your windows machine right so that virtual box is something called virtualization software okay virtualization software there are many virtualizations so softwares are available which are provided to us by many organizations virtual box oracle virtual box is one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, example and the hyper v hypervisor so all these things are virtualization software there is some virtualization software from uh, vmware as well yeah these are the these are something called virtualization software this is something called let me write some example of hypervisor hyper hypervisor okay this is something called virtualization software that will be installed on the operating system okay on top of the physical machine on top of the operating system okay now why we have installed this virtualization software what what are the what is the advantage that is that it is go, going to provide to us that's what also uh, you need to understand this virtualization software will be helping us to divide our physical machine into multiple machines okay okay this this virtualization software will be helping us to divide our physical machine into multiple machines okay let me write this one okay let me put this one okay uh, this is a second machine second this is a third machine okay so one physical server is divided into multiple machines these machines are nothing but virtual machines okay vms okay now vms virtual machines okay so all these things are same ec2 machines when we talk about the aws we will some we will call this virtual machines or ec2 machines okay all this all these names are are like same 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 it comes with the same meaning actually virtual machines vms okay let me write the full form here uh, where i can write is something like this vms okay vm virtual virtual machine virtual machine okay now what this hypervisor software did for us is it has divided our entire physical server into multiple servers those are called virtual servers or virtual machines okay vms that we call it as okay so now now on top of this each virtual machine there will be a guest operating system okay uh, okay one second control set on top of this each virtual machine there will be a separate operating system that is called guest operating system okay let me copy okay let me put something like this here okay now here suppose now if you you want to deploy three different applications app one app two app three in the previous case also we have deployed three different applications in order to deploy these three different applications we require three different servers because there is no virtualization in the in the in the case of previous use case like physical server but in this case of virtualization this this physical server this virtualization physical server has 10 cpus and 10 gb ram out of this 10 cpus and 10 gb ram 
three CPUs, like three three CPUs will be allocated to all these things. Three three GB memory will be allocated to three three VMs. Okay, or let let me let me label that one also. Like three CPUs, three CPU and three GB RAM. Okay, something like this. Okay, GB RAM. Okay, let me put it here also. Let me make this one something like this bottom so that. Uh, three CPU and uh, three GB RAM. Okay. Now, uh, this is also a three CPU. Three GB RAM. Okay. So you can see that here. Here, out of 10 CPUs and 10 GB RAM, which is there with this physical server, three CPUs and three GB memory is allocated to each virtual machine okay will be allocated to each virtual machine and one remaining one cpu and one gb is used by this virtualization software and the operating system that is installed on this physical server no problem with that okay now you can understand it here i want to deploy three different applications now i can easily deploy okay suppose the app one can be deployed on this physical uh, virtual machine here actually app app one okay you can see that app one okay now app two can be deployed in this virtual machine okay let me let me put it here app two okay let me put it here app one second uh, this is app two app two and app three is deployed in this virtual machine okay uh, let me put this one as app three uh, one second it is not being selected okay app three app 3 you can see that here in the in the case of physical servers if we are using physical servers in order to deploy our application we need three different physical servers in order to deploy three different applications but here we only have one physical server and we can deploy three different applications because it's 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 possible because because of the virtualization software virtualization okay it's it's dividing one physical server into multiple servers those are called virtual servers or virtual machines it it the meaning is same actually so what is this virtual machines the servers with we cannot touch actually we can only interact with that servers we can only uh, type some commands interact with that servers but not we cannot we cannot touch like our laptop these are virtually located on our physical server you cannot you cannot uh, touch that okay so these are something called virtual server you are i hope you people understanding okay instead of deploying uh the three different applications on three different physical servers we are using only one server one physical server and we are going to deploy three different applications on the one physical server itself okay so instead of me purchasing three different physical servers i will only purchase one physical server okay so there will not be huge cost for me the huge cost uh, with respect to the physical server the disadvantage is gone when we deal with virtualization okay now if the if there is no more uh, no more physical servers there will not be any maintenance okay you only have one physical server just maintaining that physical server is enough okay you don't need of having separate team or uh, uh, all those things okay so only one physical server are there which which is hosting our different different applications right so you know there will not be any maintenance uh, the maintenance will be there but yeah greatly reduced when we deal with when when we when when we compare with physical servers okay so no high availability okay this is one more challenge in case of aws what you can do you can put this all one second control set okay one second you can put all these things as part of something called auto scaling group this is something called auto scaling group that we, that we call it as okay all these physical servers all these virtual servers will be placed on the auto scaling group what this auto scaling group does for us if any if because of any problem if one server has been killed okay 
automatically without we interacting with anything without we doing anything a new server will be created and our application will be deployed automatically when we when we uh, have the auto scaling the, the, there will be a high availability when we deal with virtualization in the cloud okay so that's a uh, th that is the disadvantage that we have in case of physical server that is gone in case of virtualization now these three disadvantages that we have discussed with respect to the physical server deploying applications to the physical server is gone when we discuss on the uh, about the virtualization but there is still an disadvantage that is resource wastage that is still there okay suppose our application one is using one gb okay let me put this one one second uh okay application one Oh, sorry application one is there in the box okay this application one is using one cpu and one gb of memory okay so the application two is also using one cpu one cpu and one gb one gb of memory and the application three is also using one cpu one cpu and one gb of memory see see out of these three cpus and three gb memory allocated to this virtual machines for each virtual machine these applications are using only one cpus and one gb memory what about remaining two cpus and two gb memory the resource wastage the resource wastage is still there as part of this virtualization okay so because of this reason because of not only this reason there are many reasons for the evolution of docker okay so uh, let's think this is the reason okay so because of this reason the evolution of docker has been occurred actually because of the evolution of microservices and because of this reason okay so the docker evolution has been occurred actually so now let, let's move to docker okay so the disadvantage that we have in this uh, when you deploy the applications on the virtual machines directly is the resource wastage let me put that one here as a as a uh, text okay uh, let me put it here okay disadvantages of using of using uh, virtual machines to deploy applications okay to deploy applications this this let's let's discuss that okay so let's let's put that text okay now the first disadvantage that are that is still there okay that's a resource wastage out of three cpus and three gb memory that is allocated to this virtual machine one cpu and one gb memory is used by my application and the remaining two cpus and two gb memory is been wasted okay that's a wastage okay that is a resource wastage s o u r c e wastage wastage okay that's still there okay so uh, and the evolution of because of the evolution of uh, 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 microservices okay uh, let me put that point also here uh, because of the evolution of microservices microservices so this this is also a, uh, one of the reason for the evolution of container runtime engines like docker okay so what is a container runtime engine what is a cre we are going to discuss but yeah do not worry about all these things just focus on this okay why how the docker has been evolved like now here also let me discuss the docker now here also there is a physical server here also there is a physical server this is a physical server that is there okay now let me uh, put it something like this okay now uh let me take this is a physical server okay so physical physical server okay now out of uh, uh, this physical server has 10 cpus and uh, 10 gb ram okay so this physical server has 10 cpus and 10 gb ram there will be operating system on this physical server something like this okay so let me put it here uh there will be operating system okay so uh operating system okay so on top of this there will be a virtualization software there will be a virtualization software 
okay something like this uh, let me take this one virtualization software that will be there okay on top of this our physical servers will be there our virtual servers will be there right so uh, in the previous diagram only previous diagram okay please look into the previous diagram and compare this okay there will be multiple virtual servers because virtualization software will help us to divide our physical server into multiple virtual servers these are the virtual server actually now like this we have i've only drawn the one virtual server like this we are going to have multiple virtual servers something like this let me put dot 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 something like this dot dot dot, dot something like this we will be we are going to have multiple virtual servers on the on on top of physical server okay suppose this is the virtual server that we have here okay uh, this is a virtual machine or the virtual server everything is same please remember okay uh, vm okay vm now this vm has uh, three cpus and three gb ram okay like, like, like previously only three cpu and three gb three gb ram okay now what you are going to have is on this virtual server you are you will be having the guest operating system okay uh, you you are going to have the guest operating system okay so this is something called uh, os again it might be the linux or whatever it is on top of this operating system you are going to install something called docker okay you are going to install something called docker okay now let me let me let me put it here docker okay docker is a container runtime engine what are containers what is a runtime engine we are going to discuss but yeah just remember docker is a container runtime engine that's it okay uh, just remember the word the concept yeah, i'm going to discuss when we when we start the docker this is just an evaluation of docker okay so now what this docker does for us instead of deploying these applications in three different virtual machines you can deploy these three different applications on this machine only as a docker containers okay now let me deploy this one okay let me put this one okay this app one app two and the app three okay you are going to deploy this one in this virtual uh, docker on top of docker actually these are something called containers that we call it as okay you can run your application here app one and the uh, app two app two and the uh, app three app app three now let's let's take the previous example only app one is using one cpu and one gb memory app two is using one cpu and one gb memory app three is using one cpu and one gb memory right entire resource three cpus let me let me label here also uh one cpu and one gb memory okay one cpu and uh, one gb uh, memory and uh, here also one cpu okay one cpu and uh, one gb memory and here also we are going to have one cpu one cpu and uh, one gb memory right so here you can see that out of three cpus and three gb memory that is there with this virtual machine or the virtual server entire resource is properly used there is no resource wastage as part of this when you install docker okay on top of this uh, uh, uh virtual machine okay so this is the this is how the evolution of docker has been occurred and because of the microservices microservices what are microservices and what is monolithic we are going to discuss that in the tomorrow's class and because of these things okay evolution of docker has been occurred actually so that's a that's a thing actually now what what we have discussed today we have we have went through some of the introduction parts we started with what is devops what is sdlc where does devops fits in uh, uh, docker and kubernetes fits in sdlc what are what is an application what is a server what is a physical server what are the disadvantages that we have if you deploy our applications on the physical servers because of the disadvantages we went to the virtualization or the virtual machines what are the disadvantages that we have if we deploy our applications on the virtual machines we have seen that and because of the disadvantages that we have if i if we deploy our applications on virtual machines we went towards the docker okay so docker gives 
uh, uh, this containerization gives us more insights to debug our problems. If any problem appears with your applications, all these things are there. Monitoring and logging mechanisms also will be there as part of this. It will be very easy as part of this container when we deal with container containers, actually, application containers. And uh, that's the thing. Okay, this is how the Docker has been coming into the market. And uh, there are there is not only the docker which is available in the market okay because the docker is a popular one but of course but yeah there are there is not only a docker is there okay there are multiple tools like docker container runtime engines okay there, 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 there is something called rocket okay there is something called a container d okay is also a container runtime engine like docker only okay so all, multiple things are there but the docker is a popular one which is which is available in the market okay so that's that's the thing actually okay if you have tomorrow what we are going to discuss Okay, we are going to discuss about the evolution of uh, like what are microservices, what is monolithic, and we are going to discuss how to create an AWS account, how to create a virtual machine in the AWS, and all these things we are going to discuss actually. Now, if you have any questions, you can ask now. Any questions, please. It's a it's a Q and A session now. So, uh, will be uh, we will be getting the recording of all these sessions. Yes, yes. Uh, demo sessions until this Friday will be uploaded to YouTube. After that, uh, you are going to get. Uh, uh 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 what is that a drive link in which your sessions will be uploaded is so a... suppose i want to search this uh so where on youtube i will search uh let me share you the link let me stop my screen share okay one second let me share you the link mm. Okay, uh, in this playlist, uh, one second, where is that chat? Okay, in this playlist, uh, the, the video will be uploaded within next, uh, before 12 p.m. today. Okay, so that's the thing. Yeah, uh, someone ping something in chat, one second. Uh, Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, uh, Ramakrishna, sure. Could we please go a bit slower? Thank you. Yeah, sure, okay. sure, 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 sure. No problem. No problem. Okay, if you face any problems, please let me know so that uh, uh, we can fix that. Okay, so this course uh, is entirely related to AWS, Jenkins, Docker, and Kubernetes. And uh, in AWS, you know, covering. Uh, Any questions, anyone, please? Anyone have any questions? If yes, you, if, sir. Uh, yeah. Only this, uh, my suggestion is like, um, I don't know, rest of other folks, like, this is the first time, like, I'm, like, uh, going through all those, like, I understand, but if you can go a little bit slower, that would help me in understanding, you know. So yeah, otherwise it's pretty good and I'm enjoying it. Thank you. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Definitely, uh, we'll be go going a bit too slow. It's, it's entirely, uh, I, I, I should get your understanding, that's it, okay? Uh, okay, your satisfaction should be there. Yeah, let's go slow, no problem. But yeah, uh, just just whoever feeling it's fast, let's help me, just help me with the information. Uh, then, then we'll be decreasing the speed. Okay, so that's the thing. No problem. Okay, but but if, wherever you have questions, if, if you feel I'm going fast, right? So I'll be going slowly, no problem. But if you have any questions in the middle, uh, you can stop me there itself and you can ask, no problem. Okay, so yeah. Oh. Sir, one quick question. The one we talked today is about like compared to like on-premises web server, then virtualization and then to the Docker. So this Docker, 
is basically like docker engine is there and on the top of docker engine we will be having like multiple containers right yes this is where we deploy our application correct yes so for deploying our application we need uh, some kind of like web server right maybe linux web server or apache or tomcat so we will need to install that uh, server on the top of that container or what, how does that, 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 that depends actually if you want web, web server okay you need to install a web server definitely but if you are using spring boot application embedded web server will be there that is tomcat but if, if you do not want web server some, some sometimes we also do not want web servers okay when we deal with containers okay so in that case you know not of installing the web server on the containers okay there will be a separate process that will be running instead of web servers actually okay containers are not only meant for running applications they are meant for different things actually they are meant for running cicd jobs also we are going to see docker as an agent in the jenkins but yeah uh, yeah not only you can you can also run multiple things not only web server but web server also need to be executed when we deal with microservices okay okay sir. okay thank you Hi, sir. All applications demonstrated with Java only now in this course. Yes, Java. Yes, we are going to, I'm, I'm going to explain you the Spring Boot application. Like what is an application? What is a Spring Boot application? What are APIs in this application? Okay. So what is a dependency? Okay. Uh, uh, I need to explain a few things about the Spring Boot application. Yeah. All this, all this on Java, as well as I also need to keep in mind the other, co other people, right? I, a little bit Python. Okay. So where we need to, uh, where we are going to, uh, execute some scripts of python as part of our containers okay how to uh, create a container from based on the python actually so that's 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 also there okay so but the most of the things will be under java spring boot microservices yes okay so if you have no questions Okay, please ask if you have unique questions. If you have no questions, please go ahead. There is a uh, 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 the, 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 the details were pasted in the chat. Please go ahead and register for the course. That's what I can say. And uh, yeah, once you have registered for the course, please help me with the information so that I can join you. Uh, I can help you in joining you in the Slack channel. Okay, so yeah, that's the thing. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Uh, the after yep. registration, the screenshot should be sent on the number on which we are uh, communicating on WhatsApp. When we are getting messages in WhatsApp about uh, this batch. So I'm not sure. You need to discuss with the uh, that that Durga Soft people only because yeah, they are going to handle the non-technical things. Hmm. Sir, uh, I have one quick question. I mean, I'm still confused. Like you said, like. Um, please correct me wrong if I'm wrong. Like I was under the impression like this Docker, whatever we talk is basically like we want to uh, host a microservice based application on the top of Docker. But you said like it's not only like uh, deploying the application, right? Like what are the other things we can do with Docker? You said like agents or something like if you can explain a little bit, you know, that would be great. Yes, yes. Uh, I hope you know CICD pipeline. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Azure DevOps pipeline, Jenkins pipeline. Yeah, yeah. Jenkins pipeline. You know, right? So you yeah. can also execute that pipeline inside the Docker container. Okay. You can use the Docker as an agent. Instead of having the servers as an agent, you can use the Docker container as an agent and you can run that pipeline. Okay. It is not only for running our applications. You can also run our entire Jenkins pipeline or, or or the Azure DevOps pipeline that that you have discussed. Okay, so uh, 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 that pipeline also can be executed. So suppose uh, you have some use case, you have some use case in your organization, uh, like you need to perform some automation daily. You, you need to mo daily morning. You need to perform some automation. You need to do something like starting all the hundred different servers in your AWS account. Okay, daily in the morning. Okay, so for that use case, you can also leverage the Docker and you can write a script and put it inside the Docker image and execute that Docker image as a container daily morning. Then automatically, all those script, all those, all those machines will be started every day in the morning and you can stop 
in the same uh, with the same use case you can also stop in the evening yeah these are all the scenarios will be there but when we deal with creating custom docker images we are going to see all these scenarios starting the server in the aws account using docker container all these things we are going to see do not worry about that so one of the example i can say you is running ci cd pipeline inside the docker container you can also do that okay uh, good, good morning sir. good morning uh, uh, so i have a question so we should be working with ecs going forward in this uh in this right no, no, not ECS, not ECS, not Elastic not. Container Service. It's EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service. Kubernetes, but, okay. Yes. So, if you want ECS, uh, yeah, of course, I can provide you. No problem. Uh, okay. Because I already worked on ECS. So that's uh, another uh, way of deploying our applications as containers. No problem with that. If you want, please let me know. I can add that syllabus. I, I add that content to the AWS, actually. Okay, so I have one more question. So we will be sorry, I forgot. I will ask you in the sorry, sir. Sure, sure. Sir, uh, to add the the point, what a friend uh, like my friend mine just told me. If you can like just explain, I mean, it does not have to be long. Like uh, whatever we are talking is Docker Kubernetes is just like it's on managed like service we are talking right with this. Uh, Kubernetes with the AWS is a managed service. If you can guide like how we, uh, you know, deploy our application on a private registry and then from pulling that to, uh, you know, like uh, an AWS uh, Kubernetes cluster, that yes, will help. Yes, for, for yes we internet. are going to we are going to store our images on the private registers only. Few few images will be there in the public registries. No problem with that. But our our private images, which we are going to create from our application, will be we we are going to put that images as part of the private registries. That uh, that is AWS ECR. Okay, we are going to use that AWS ECR. And how we are going to pull the image also from the AWS ECR, we are going to see very clearly to our Kubernetes cluster actually. That is there, that is there in the syllabus. If you if you went through the yesterday's session, right? Uh, in the project number uh, two, okay, uh, that, that, that I have mentioned. Okay, okay, that, that would be good, sir. Thank you, yeah. Yeah. Are we using Rancher and then yes. help start? Rancher is there, Kubernetes dashboard is there, and KNNS dashboard is there. Three different dashboards are there in order to uh, monitor our Kubernetes cluster. So we'll be covering that here, right? Yes. Or help chart as well, right? Helm chart also is there, yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. Sir, I, I have one more question. So, will we be dealing with uh, a scripting of the YML files or not? Yes, yes. YMLs, you, because the Kubernetes is entirely all about the YMLs. You, you need to know the YML syntax and all these things. Yes. yes. Uh, we are going to deal with that, how to write the YAML files and uh, all these things are there. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Thank sir. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for joining. And thank you. We'll meet at tomorrow class 8 a.m. Thank you. Bye.